Water is the rebel element. It defies the laws of physics and gravity and you can't kill it. Without it there is no life and it came from outer space. It reincarnates for all to see and by molecular count we're 99% of it. Rebellious, eternal and alien. Just look at the power we're filled with. My name is Vader Austin. I'm a water researcher from New Zealand specialising in crystallography. I'm about to share some of my work with you that has never been seen before. Beginning with the kind of water we use every day when we turn on a tap. Here we see the crystallography of municipal tap water. I'd like you to notice how disordered the ice looks. It's interesting to see a visual representation of the kind of water many people are drinking. Here we see the crystallography of water that has gone through a lot of plumbing and processing. It contains fluoride and heavy metals. Notice how cloudy it is. Now let's compare that to spring water collected directly from source. Notice the clarity and formation of star hexagons as I like to call them. They indicate structural integrity. Here's another example of spring water showing the same beautiful geometric patterns. Seeing these photos of spring water and tap water is like looking at order versus chaos. Next we have the liquid crystal architecture of water taken from a little stream that ran through a forest here in New Zealand. Notice the ferns and the star hexagons typical of unprocessed water. It seems that the water has created a piece of ice art. I'll add that although the structures are very nice you can't be sure if the water is safe to drink unless you get an analysis done from a laboratory. This video is from water I collected from a puddle of rain. New science tells us that when we drink water, our body converts it into H3O2, which means it has an extra hydrogen and oxygen atom. It's also known as fourth phase water because it's more of a gel. It fuels our cells and acts as a negatively charged battery that is essentially run on light. Dr. Gerald Pollack talks about this in depth if you feel inspired to watch his TED talk. Saliva is a good example of a viscous bodily fluid that's 99% water. It behaves very differently to the kind of water we're familiar with. This is a video I took of melting saliva. When you spit you'll notice it's mainly bubbles. See how the bubbles hold their shape even when they move around the dish. Saliva has been used for many years as a way to test for fertility. If a woman is ovulating, the saliva will show ferning like you see in this picture. This is a great example of the hidden structural information in water. Blood is 90% water and it all looks very similar in test tubes, just as water looks very similar in bottles. But we know that blood samples can vary greatly and my research suggests that it's no different with water. As we progress on, let's look at what a microwave does to water. The water post-electromagnetic radiation looks almost brain dead. Imagine what it's doing to your cup of tea. Here we see the crystallography of water that has had little to no human intervention. As soon as water starts going through piping, its structural integrity is compromised. This slide shows the crystallography of tap water and water with various levels of EMF exposure. The first 4G sample originally had the structure of spring water. This is how it looked after sitting next to a cell tower for 15 minutes. The same test was done for the second 4G image except it was sitting there for half an hour. By volume, we're approximately 70% water and by molecular count we're 99% of it. It makes me wonder how our world of technology might be affecting us. I think getting out in nature is very healing for the body. Which leads me to some studies I've done on the impact healing energy has on the structures of tap water. I asked 60 people from around the world to send love to the water sample on the left. The result can be seen on the right. 
Here Reiki energy was given to the sample on the left, the result is on the right. And lastly, a prayer was said to the water sample on the left, the result is on the right. Just as we can heal with kindness and appreciation, so can water. So now that you've become familiar with various water structures and have been introduced to the idea that water can be influenced, you can appreciate just how extraordinary these upcoming images really are. But first, let's watch a video of water responding to the thought of a sailboat. For this next video, I used tap water with very poor structural integrity as you can see. But even so, you may notice that a leaf shape is forming amidst the rest of the chaotic ice in response to the influence of autumn leaves. It appears that water can use its building blocks of ice to create imagery as a response to human consciousness. These next photos show the influence on the right and the response on the left. What we're seeing is water defying its natural formations to create something extraordinary. Sometimes fact is stranger than fiction, and when it comes to water, it seems that there is no end to what it can teach us. Perhaps the ancients and the indigenous people were right all along. Perhaps water really is a living entity.